Hey guys, it's Tealus here. Welcome back to Temple of the Five Dawns. For the final time, we are in the second video of the two video series looking at Brewmaster Monks and their changes in World of Warcraft Legion. In the first video, we took a look at the changed, removed, and new abilities for a Brewmaster Monk, as well as the artifact weapon Whoops, that you can see on my back here, zoomed in a little too far there. Um, we looked at both the artifact weapon and the abilities in the first video. In this video, we'll be looking at the PvE and the PvP talents that will be available to a Brewmaster Monk in World of Warcraft the Legion. So let's go ahead and get into it. For the PvE talent tree, in the first tier, this is kind of like your 30 tier on live. Uh, we have Chi Burst and Chi Wave making a reappearance. Uh, they function exactly as they do online. So nothing has essentially changed here. You just go ahead and fire it off as normal with Chi Burst. functions the same. Same thing with Chi Wave. Uh, they both, basically, all you need to know is that nothing has changed between them and basically they're back as such. However, Zen Sphere is gone and Eye of the Tiger is now here. And Eye of the Tiger is Tiger of Palm. Applies Eye of the Tiger, dealing 46,000 nature damage to an enemy and 33,000 healing to a monk over eight seconds so uh let's go ahead and switch this here i'm waiting for chi burst to come off cooldown there it is and we'll just go ahead and use this here use a kick right there and as you can see it has the buff eye of the tiger it deals that extra damage and then heals the monk over eight seconds as well so uh it can, you can even see in the bottom left hand corner it says eye of the tiger healed you for zero nature 9,000 overheal. You can see all the ticks on there as well. So, it's a nice form of healing that you can get. You can kind of choose your form of damage slash healing in this first tier. In the 30 tier, they have gone with the mobility. So, they effectively switched the 15 and the 30 tiers. And for the most part, this tier is all the same. Celerity is the same. Tiger's Lust is the same. And G Torpedo, which was on the 90 tier, has been brought here, but it basically... Uh, is momentum. It is essentially momentum. The only difference is I think uh, momentum stacked twice for 25% per. This one stacks for 30% per uh, up to two times stacking. So you see, get a 60% buff as opposed to only a 50% buff. There is a tooltip change on Tiger's Lust uh, that basically says that you can use it on a friendly target's movement speed. Uh, which I believe was already the case, so uh, really just a kind of a tooltip update there. But for the most part, everything has changed. Uh, sorry, not changed. Everything is the same between these two tiers, except for Chi Torpedo. They wanted to keep Chi Torpedo because uh, its visual was cool, I think, uh, which kind of makes sense. Uh, so they wanted to keep it. They were getting rid of Chi Torpedo anyway, so they wanted to keep the spell visual, and so they just moved it to the 30 tier. On the 45 tier, we have three new abilities. Uh, the first of which is Black Ox Brew, which kind of thematically is still somewhat reminiscent of Chi Brew, but it is different. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown. You chug some Black Ox Brew, which instantly re -refu refills your energy and your Iron Skin Brew slash Purifying Brew charges. They say and Purifying Brew charges. That makes it seem as though they're not connected, but if you've seen the last video, both your Iron Skin and your... Uh, purifying brews share charges together so if I use one I will lose another so um, basically it will fill that back up to three and you will uh, on a 1.5 minute cooldown and it refills your energy as well energy really regenerates fast on a monk so this isn't necessarily my favorite these other options are gift of the mist gift of the ox has a 60% chance increased chance to trigger based on your missing health. So 0 to 60% chance to trigger based on how much health you are missing. Um, I'm not sure where the threshold is, where it actually reaches max 60%. However, I did read a blue post uh, recently that discussed um, how they were moving. I can't which remember what ability it was, but there was an ability that could trigger um, at like uh, pretty low health. Uh, like we're talking like almost 0% health and it was kind of foolish for it to trigger that low and uh, They they moved it up a little bit so that you know, you didn't have to be like literally dead uh, To get the full 60% so I'm not quite sure if that is implemented or that has always been the case in World of Warcraft um, 
maybe it just hasn't been uh, kind of mentioned. This expansion, we're seeing a lot of these variable type abilities where it will change, uh, whether it's from elemental shamans to, um, you know, different warrior abilities. There's a lot of different abilities now that will do different amounts of damage or reduction or healing based on how much health you have or how much you've spent here. Uh, in terms of resource, so I'm not quite sure how it's operating in World of Warcraft before Legion, but uh, that's just something to think about um, going forward. Just to let you know, you won't have to be pretty much dead to get 60% increased uh, chance to trigger on Gift of Ox. It'll likely be something like 30% or 40% health, and you'll get that full 60% chance to trigger. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, though. They have not... Uh, set it out. And in case you forgot what Gift of the Ox is, basically Gift of the Ox is the, is the ability that as you take damage you get healing spheres to pop around you and uh, heal yourself. And then you can use Expel Harm to draw those in and heal yourself even more. The last option here is called Light Brewing. This is, this is my favorite, excuse me, this is my favorite of the tier. Um, and it reduces the cooldown of your Iron Skin and Purifying Brew by 3 seconds each. So it brings them down to 16.5 second recharge, and it adds a charge to them. So, uh, technically speaking, if you were using them consistently, you basically get have a charge every 4 seconds. Uh, and then on top of that, remember that every time you use Keg Smash, you reduce it by 4 seconds. This is personally my favorite, and I think this, I think this personally trumps Black, o Black Ox Brew it, like 10 times over. Way better. And then Gifts of the Mist, I'm not sure how this will play in, but uh, overall, I think in terms of PvE, Light Brewing will easily be the option. Um, in terms of tanks, uh, for PvP, Gift of the Ox, uh, Gift of the Ox, Gift of the Mist may be more, uh, may be more appealing than Light Brewing. I'm not quite sure, but you have your options open on this here, so it's pretty cool. In the 60 tier, we have Ring of Peace and Leg Sweep, which are making their returns. Ring of Peace is a little bit different in that Ring of Peace used to incapacitate those who started to use uh, harmful spells and abilities within the ring. This one knocks them out of the ring. I've had this used against me. I just get You just get kind of like a little punted out of the ring, and then you kind of have to deal with it. Um, and so that's how Ring of Peace will work. The third option here, though, Charging Ox Wave is gone across the entire game. A uh, summon Black Ox statue, and this is what was baseline before, and now it's being brought back in terms of uh, something in this tier. I think this is an excellent, excellent, excellent idea. And the reason is this. 60 tier in the old uh, talent tree used to be basically just a PvP tier. Like, it used to only be PvP talents, and PvE was just like they'd glaze over that tier and it'd be worthless. Now, with summon Black Ox statue here... Um, I pretty much 100% guaranteed that every PvE -er will be taking Black Ox statue because with the massive reduction, losing dizzying haze and so forth, the massive reduction that you have received in terms of uh, your AOE threat potential as a as a tank in a, as a brewmaster. You're losing Dizzying Haze and being able to create a massive amount of threat with Dizzying Haze is gone. Black Ox Statue is going to be very powerful in terms of being able to create AoE threat. It pulses out every one second a taunt to bring enemies to you. So it's like not only is it a protection against other mobs that may be attacking, but um, it allows you to... Uh, have everyone taunt the statue, which has approximately half the health which you do. So this has one, almost 1 1.2 million health, and I'm sitting at almost 2.4 million health. So you can see there, it's about exactly half of your health bar. And then, of course, you can use Provoke on the target. And as you can see, I taunted every one of these little training dummies right here when I provoked the uh, Black Ox statue, because, and you'll see it again as it, above their heads, I'll hit this here, and it, it taunted all of them within range because... Uh, they're all being taunted constantly by the Black Ox statue. And you can even do some, uh, you know, kind of some trading because it pulses every one second. You can taunt uh, if you need to. You can play around with the Black Ox statue. If you somehow lose threat over someone with AoE, the Black Ox statue will be able to re-pick up that threat because they should be the next in line in terms of threat. So, 
in all honesty, I think this is an absolute must for PvE. Um, I'm not sure how it'll, it'll work in the tight quarters of maybe a, um, a, a dungeon. But in terms of raid threat, this is easily going to be the choice for PvE because the other options are not very good. On the other hand, PvP are obviously going to choose something like Ring of Peace or Leg Sweep because stuns are OP right now. Um, so that could be an option that they choose. I'm not really sure. Uh, it'll be up to four people to decide. I need to go over here and uh, get this uh, Black Ark statue out of combat so I can start going to the other abilities. But uh, overall for 60, Black Ark statue is going to be taken for PvE because it really uh, puts you... Whereas before in the last video I said that basically I find Broodmasters in between the uh, Prot, Warrior, and Vengeance Demon Hunters and on one side for a single target and then on, on the other side... They're uh, sandwiched by Guardian Druids and uh, Protection Paladins. I have a feeling this will put them more in the area of Protection Paladins and Guardian Druids in terms of their ability to keep AoE threat on themselves. So I'd expect this to stay for PvE and be there consistently, for uh, be the number one choice for PvE without question. That brings us to the 75 tier. There was a long time spent on that 60 tier, but the 75 tier should look very familiar. Both Dampen Harm and Diffused Magic come back essentially the same, however they have been nerfed. It is now a 2 minute cooldown for both of them, up from 1.5 minute cooldown, so that is a big change there. Also, Dampen Harm only reduces 30% of the damage taken uh, for abilities that, for the next 3 attacks, that damage you for 15% or more of your maximum health, as opposed to 50% of the damage taken. There are a few abilities that do more than 15% of your maximum health, but in all honesty, uh, there aren't too many that do more than 15% of your maximum health as a Brewmaster tank, so I really don't see anyone taking damage and uh, harm. Diffuse Magic reduces magic damage you take by 60% as opposed to 90%, so that has been nerfed in that way. So basically, they both have had a 30 second increase in their cooldowns, and then the damage that they mitigate has been reduced significantly for bo both of them. 20% uh, uh, for Dam and Harm, and 30% for Diffuse Magic. The last option here is Healing Elixirs. It carries the same name, however it is different from the way it used to be. Um, it used to be basically heals you for 50% of your maximum health when a damaging attack brings you below 35% health. Uh, you drink brew or tea while, or when you drink a brew or tea while injured. Uh, this is now its own little ability. You drink a healing elixir, healing you for 15% of your maximum health. Healing elixir will automatically trigger if you drop below 35% health. And this is two charges. So as you pull it down here, as you can see, I have two charges. I can pop it whenever I want. Or if I drop below 35% health, it will pop instead. I see both in PvE and PvP most likely you taking either Diffuse Magic or Healing Elixirs. They're going to be probably the best option. Probably in PvE, Healing Elixir will easily be the best option available to you. I don't know. Um, it, it may depend if there is a high damage auto attack boss. Maybe Damp and Harm will be pretty powerful. Um, but otherwise, for the most part, uh, it's an open tier. Uh, you can see what uh, fits your best playstyle and then go from there. But... Uh, with the exception of Healing Elixir, this tier is somewhat the same as the old 75 tier. In the 90 tier, we have the return of Rushing Jade Win, which is great. No longer generates Chi or anything like that. It just straight cooldown, uh, deals a lot of damage. Uh, Rushing Jade Win used to replace Spinning Crane Kick. It does not on any spec now, so even if Spinning Crane Kick were still on Brewmasters, it would not replace it. So... In terms of AoE threat that we were talking about with Summon Black Ox statue, this is another item that you will have in order to generate AoE threat. And it's just one click, you don't have to continually click it or use it. So I would consider this to be used a lot by Brewmasters, considering you just have to click it and let it go. I would expect... I would probably expect, since it lasts for the entire duration, you can have this up 100% of the time, I would expect Brewmasters to take this. Um, while plowing through trash or any type of AoE fight, it's just way too easy to, to hold AoE threat with Rushing Jade Win. Over here on the right hand side, we have Special Delivery. Drinking Iron Skin or Purifying Brew is a 30% chance to toss a keg high into the air that lands nearby after 3 seconds, dealing 281,000 damage to all enemies within 8 yards, 
and reducing their movement speed by 50% for 15 seconds. Um, this, so this is basically a keg smash, but it's p more powerful. Uh, I believe, yes, it's more powerful. However, I'm not sure if it'll proc off of, um, if it will actually proc off of, um, your, uh, it will proc your breath of fire. That's something I want to find. So I'm actually going to get into combat here, and then I'm going to try and use these charges of iron skin brew and see if I can't get, uh, there we go. There's a keg that just chucked out. There it is. It landed right here on this thing. Let's see if we can use, yes, it does. So it does function exactly like a, even though it's called special delivery, it does function exactly like a keg smash. So that means you can use it to apply your breath of fire damage over time. So this could be another AOE option. Uh, the only problem is that there's that randomness of where it will land. It's going to be a nice burst damage. Uh, 281,000 damage is nothing to sneeze at. Um, just your Tiger Palm does 28,000, your Blackout Strike does 129. Uh, Keg Smash does do 231, so having an extra t Keg Smash every time you use one of your brews, um, which you technically will be able to use a brew every four seconds, that's pretty powerful. So this is something I could probably easily see in PvP. However, in PvE, uh, it's too random. Uh, you want some control over your tanking in, PvP, in PvE, and you would not have that with special delivery, so I do not see this being taken by really any PvEers. Instead, it will be the other two talents um, in PvP, though this could be something that's definitely taken. The last option is Invoke Nuzao, if I pronounce that correctly, the Black Ox. Summons an effigy of Nuzao, the Black Ox, for 45 seconds. Nuzao attacks your primary target and taunts it, and also frequently stomps damaging all nearby enemies. So, uh, Invoke Zuin used to be, you know, the same for all three specs, and they've basically changed it now so that it's different for each one, and, and uh, each one has their own type of, uh, you know, a new, their own type of invoke, invoking whatever uh, spirit they're able to, or invoke, they can summon their own effigy, I should say, that is more related to their spec as opposed to the way it was before, where it was just like, um, it was all just zooming and that's it. So, this is the Black Ox. Let's go ahead and summon this out so we can see what this looks like. Uh, I honestly actually have never seen it before, so we'll see what it looks like. And we have our little mount right here. Uh, mount, not mount, but we have our own little, uh, uh, Nuzal right here. And he sits out here for quite a long time, I believe 45 seconds. And he sits there, and he taunts it. And, uh, basically, he taunts your primary target and does damage. Uh, let's see how much health he has. He has he has the same amount of health as you, so he has a ton of health. I'm not sure how this will work in PvP. Basically, it can be, like, where your health is just getting so dicey that you need help. This can be used as a defensive cooldown, and Nuzal will take the threat off of you. Um, and he'll be able to main tank for a little bit while the healer's gonna breather, and then, cause he's got, he's gonna have a lot of health, and then, you know, once he dies, you'll be able to, uh, reassume it tanking and so forth. Maybe your stagger gets too high, I'm not sure. It's an option to you. So you basically have a single target option in Invokes and Zell. You have an AoE option in Rushing Jade Wind. I very much doubt anyone's going to take this for single target. Uh, you're going to be generating enough threat anyways. You won't need this for single target. But basically, Invoke Nuzal will be your single target. Rushing J-Win will be your AoE target. For PvP, it'll probably be either Special Delivery or Rushing J-Win, whichever one you choose. Uh, remember that Rushing J-Win doesn't cost anything. It's just free damage. Um, free dot damage as long as they're within range of you. So that's honestly pretty strong, and I don't see why people wouldn't take it. In the 100 tier... Uh, we have all new abilities in this 100 tier, which I'm glad. Uh, one thing that they've done in Legion is, in, in Warlords of Draenor, and, and, you know, when they first introduced this this new talent tree, I believe it was Mr. Pandaria, if I remember correctly, um, basically, they tried to keep the talents the same across all three specs, and then this time in Warlords of Draenor, they're like, no, we're just going to give each spec their own brand new talent tree, which I'm really grateful for. Like, yes, there are tiers that are the same across all, all of the specs. Uh, 60 tiers, one of them, 30, 15, those are essentially the same across all specs, but then they have, um, and 75 tiers as well, but then they have something like, 
uh, the 90 tier. Well, yeah, Rushing Jade Wing comes back, but then they have Invoke Nuzao and Special Delivery, which are completely different. And then they have the 100 tier, which is completely different from the other 100 tiers. So they've really tried to separate that, and they have, they've done it with everything, even from something like a, a Mage. You know, even though a Mage, or they're all DPS specs, they've diversified it, and I really do like that. So, a little sidetrack there, but getting back on, the, on point here, we have Higher Tolerance. Stagger delays an additional 10% of incoming damage. You gain 15% haste based on your current level of stagger. So, um, let's go ahead real quick and get out of this so we can make sure, we can take a look at stagger and see where it is. Remember, stagger is an actual ability here. So, it's 35% baseline. Um, so, I spoke wrong in the last video. I said 45, and that's because I had high tolerance on. Sometimes when you activate these, uh, these talents, it shows up in the tooltips, and then sometimes it doesn't. So... Um, that was my bad for not having high tolerance off when I went into uh, the first video. But uh, stagger is 35 baseline. High tolerance will make it 45, and then iron skin brew will bring it up to 85. So you can really uh, stagger a lot of your incoming damage with uh, something like high tolerance. And you gain up to 15% haste based on your current level of stagger, which, of course, as you should know, your haste, unless I'm totally wrong, your haste should help with, yes, your energy regeneration as well, which means that you'll be able to do more uh, Tiger Palms and Keg Smashes, which will then in turn bring your bruise down more even, uh, even more so, so that you have more defensive measures. So, a lot of options here with high tolerance. Uh, we'll skip over here to the far left-hand side, which is Elusive Dance. Purifying Brew now clears an additional 15% of damage delayed with Stagger. So this brings it up to 65% of your damage delayed with Stagger. It also grants up to 15% dodge and damage done for 6 seconds based on the level of Stagger damage purified. So I'm not going to Stagger anything, but we'll use Purifying Brew and see if the buff pops. Oh, I have nothing to Stagger yet, so I can't uh, use it. I have to actually run down here to the, um, I'll make a little trip down here to the, the tanking dummies. That's the only time I can actually stagger damage. And we'll run down here and test this out just so we can see this. But basically, uh, you're going, it, this enhances your purifying brew. Uh, whereas this, uh, kind of indirectly will enhance your, make your iron skin brew even more popular. Uh, so you kind of have like two options. You can choose between the two different brews here, to, depending on your play style, what it needs, etc., and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and start to take damage, and then I will use a purifying brew to stagger, to bring that stagger down, heal myself up. And so now I have the increased dodge chance, or that's elusive brawler, so that's not quite there. Uh, let's go ahead and do this again so I can see if I can get... Uh, the correct amount of uh, if I can get the buff to proc and we'll go ahead and use it here and yes there it is right there dodge chance increased by 5% damage increased by 5% and that's because I had so little stagger but that is an option open to you so that's pretty cool the last option here is called blackout combo and this is really cool so it kind of brings into the combo aspect of a windwalker monk uh, into your uh, into your Brewmaster, and I do like this because Blackout Strike is a very boring ability. I'm not quite sure why they put it in. Uh, it doesn't really play off of anything unless you grab Blackout Combo. It doesn't play off of anything whatsoever. So, putting this in actually does some interesting stuff. Like, normally it's just a straight damage, and that's it. So, it's single target threat damage, but I'm not quite sure why it's there. So, this makes it interesting, though. Your Blackout Strike also impairs your next ability. So, with first one is going to be Tiger Palm damage increased by, uh, you know, by a, a ton, basically. Was it 200%? 200%. So, regular Tiger Palm is 46,000 crit. Um, we'll go ahead and use, um, we'll go ahead and use a Blackout Strike, and then we'll use a, uh, Kick it, uh, a, sorry, a Tiger Palm in front of it. We'll do this again. Blackout Strike. Tiger Palm now doing 60,000 uncrit. So that's a big change there uh, in terms of... I'm looking for my actual actions and not what happened to me. So I'm trying to see uh, exactly what I'm doing there. 
So Tiger Palm's hitting for 59,000 as opposed to the other one that was only hitting for, it was hitting for a lot less. Uh, if I can find it. It looks like the first blackout strike with Tiger Palm hit for 208,000 physicals. So that's a ton. Um, that's a lot there, and uh, it's going to be worth a lot. The second option is Breath of Fire, cooldown reduced by 6 seconds, so it's got a 15 second cooldown, so getting a, uh, getting a kind of, uh, only 9 second cooldown on Breath of Fire is pretty powerful if you ask me. The next option here is going to be Keg Smash, reduces the remaining cooldown of your brews by 2 additional seconds. So we'll go ahead and use an Iron Skin Brew here. And then we will use a Blackout Strike and then a Keg Smash and it will cut it down real quick. That's really helpful. You have Iron Skin Brew, pauses stagger damage for three seconds. That's pretty potent if you ask me. So you use Iron Skin Brew, which basically increases the amount you delay. So you're gonna be, your stagger amount's gonna go through the roof, but at the same time, it's paused for a bit. So you'd be like, yeah, I got a lot of incoming damage coming real soon. And if you want, you can continue to stagger it with Iron Brew every three seconds. If you if you really have to, you can basically get uh, 12 seconds. Think about it. 12 sec. If, if I if I've done the math right, you can get 12 seconds of Iron Skin Brew. Okay, uh, that has been paused. At the same time, with four charges, if you have this light brewing, you can get 12 full seconds in which you're only taking 15% damage as opposed to a full 100% damage because it's all being staggered but at the same time while it's being staggered it's uh it's just sitting there waiting so after that 12 seconds you're gonna have to be like guys i'm basically going to die instantly and so forth so you're gonna have to be real careful Probably the best thing to do would be doing three stacks of Iron Skin Brew and then using a Purifying Brew to get the most out of that one Purifying Brew and get you back into better shape real quick and just warn your healers that you're going to be taking a lot of damage for a little bit. But, you know, there may be a situation in which you're taking a lot, the, the raid is taking a lot of AoE damage and you just need to keep yourself alive uh, so that the healers don't have to worry about you for a second. And then that's something that you can do, so that's pretty cool. The last option here is Purifying Brew, uh, which grants you a stack of Elusive Brawler. So if you've forgotten how Mastery works now, as a Brewmaster Elusive Brawler, you will gain stacking 16% dodge chance until you dodge. So this will automatically give you a stack of... Um, this will automatically give you a stack of dodge right off the bat there. Um, we'll, I don't think I can proc it, but we... Well, I can't because I, I'm not staggering any damage, so I can't even use Purifying Brew. But you will get more dodge chance basically out of that. This Blackout combo, I think, is a lot of fun and can be used a lot. Considering this is only a 3 second cooldown, I, it, would not, it would not surprise me to see this, to see this used consistently. Um, basically, and like I said, with that other, with that, with that strategy with Iron Skin Brew, it's basically going to be blackout, blackout kick, Iron Skin Brew, blackout kick, Iron Skin Brew, blackout kick, Iron Skin Brew, and then you'll use a purifying brew at the end to clear 50% of that massive amount of, um, you know, damage that you're taking, stagger damage that you're taking. Uh, so that'll actually be pretty cool. Um, I think that'll be a lot of fun to play around with, and but in the end, it's going to be up to you whether or not you feel like high tolerance or elusive uh, dance is better. Uh, but in the end, I mean, you're going to be able to take, uh, a, you know, a lot more damage. You're going to be able to, you know, choose your play style with a Brewmaster Monk, which is a lot of fun. Now, I did misspeak. I did say you'd only be taking 15% of damage with that... Um, with that strategy with Iron Skin Brew, I forgot that uh, you would have to have higher tolerance, high tolerance to be able to take the 15% damage only. So it'd, it'd actually be 25% damage that you would be taking instead of the full 100%. Still, um, that's a lot that you're able to mitigate and help out your healer support. So, a lot of fun there. A um, lot of options there. Uh, it closes the gaps with Rushing Jade Wind and Summon Black Oz statue with your AoE threat issues. Um, so you definitely more are in line with, say, a Guardian Druid and a Protection Paladin 
in terms of AoE threat generation as opposed to more prop warrior, vengeance, demon hunter. So definitely a good change there. With that, let's go ahead and look at the honor talents. The PvP talents that you get. The way PvP will work in World of Warcraft Legion is you will start at level 1, you'll work your way all the way up to level 50. When you hit level 50, you'll be a, have a chance to prestige, and you will lose all the talents that you have gra grained, that you have gained up until now, and start back at level 1. Uh, by prestiging, you get stuff like special mounts and so forth, uh, special pets. It depends on the prestige level. You'll start at level 1 with Gladiator's Medallion in your honor trek, and by level 10, you will have a full list of talents. And then 13 starts the next one and goes all the way down to Double Barrel. And then it will repeat for the last here with the last last ability, Mighty Arctic. You will get it at 46. And then at 50, you'll be able to prestige if you choose to do so. Or you can keep all of your talents. With that being said, the first tier will be all about the Honorable Medallion. The Honorable Medallion is a three-minute trinket. Kind of like an heirloom trinket that you'll get just from entering a battleground. And when you get that honorable medallion, you will be able to uh, have that three-minute trinket. However, you can trade it in for a gladiator's medallion, which gives you your basic two-minute trinket. The second option here, though, is something called adaptation. And all loss of control effects with a duration of five seconds or more will activate your honorable medallion spell, but it only causes it to occur, incur a 60-second cooldown. Uh, this one is kind of nice um, because it gives you... It, while you do lose control over your trinket, it does give it a 60 second cooldown. However, uh, you can activate an honorable medallion. However, I do believe it puts adaptation on a three minute cooldown as well. So you will lose that. Um, it, you know, it really is up to you on whether or not you want control over your trinket or whether you'd have a 60 second cooldown. The last option is Relentless, which is reduces the duration of crowd control effects by 25%. It will replace your armor medallion. However, this is definitely one of the tank specs I think would be better for it because with Iron Skin Brew and Staggering as a Brewmaster, this could probably be really potent and really helpful for you. Um, reducing the duration of incoming crowd control effects by 25%, considering the Iron Skin Brew lasts for 7.5 seconds. And with certain talents, basically, you're allowed to have one every four seconds, I think will be pretty potent overall. So that's something that you can look forward to. In the second tier, this is the tank tier. We have Relentless Assault. Being attacked increases your damage by 3%. Lasts for five seconds, stacks up to five times. That's an option there. However, there's nothing, there's no denying that Admonishment is the best uh, in terms of any type of organized team play, rated play. Your Provoke has a reduced range but causes the enemy player to be intimidated, causing their damage to be... causing their damage taken by... Oh my gosh. Increasing their damage taken by 20% for 6 seconds. Your melee attacks refresh the duration of the Intimidate. This is so strong in rated play. I don't see tanks taking anything other than this. In fact, it's so strong that I would not be surprised if it gets nerfed. It's really strong. The third option here is Soften Blows. Uh, this is something that I definitely uh, would see being taken uh, in terms of... Uh, this is something that I see being taken in terms of uh, basically uh, any un unorganized PvP. Uh, but however, with a Broodmaster and how they play, this is something that could easily be seen... Uh, I can easily see being taken by any brewmaster, even over admonishment, because when you think about it, with stagger, pretty much all attacks incoming will probably deal less than 10% of your maximum health and damage um, because of stagger, which means that you will always have a flat 20% uh, reduction in damage done to you. Uh, so that's pretty strong. I mean, I'm not sure if it negates stagger, if it says, okay, yeah, um, the ability coming in dealt more than 10% of your maximum health, but at the same time, it, um, it was staggered, uh, we're still gonna give it the full damage of what it would be, and it won't be reduced by 20%, but it'll be staggered. I'm not sure if that's how they're gonna work it, but my idea is that if the damage comes in and it's staggered, so you take less damage from it, uh, and it's below 10% health, that means it's going to benefit from this 20% reduction, which means that Soften Blows is just synergizes so well with a Brewmaster, if that is the case, which makes it really strong and probably my favorite choice in this tier. In the third tier, we have Yulon's Gift, your Chi Torpedo, or Roll, will dispel all snares affecting you when used, that's really strong. There's Eminence, 
reduces the cooldown of transcendence transfer by five seconds. Um, I believe I might have missed this in the um, in the uh, abilities overview. However, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, there was a buff, an enhancement in World of Warcraft Legion that brought your transcendence transfer from 45 seconds down to 10 seconds. That has been made baseline, so that's the same for you. However, transcendence transfer is 25 seconds as opposed to 20 seconds, so there's a 5 second nerf on that. But uh, this ability, if I can even find it, eminence would bring it back down to 20 seconds and you would have that back. So that's something that is uh, available to you. The last option here is fast feet. You move 15% faster for 3 seconds after being attacked. Um, fast feet might be nice in combination with Relentless Assault. Being the elusive brawler you are, you'll be able to move fast, uh, increase damage, and stagger your damage all at the same time. There's a lot of fun options here for Brewmaster. In the fourth tier, we have Eerie Fermentation. Your stagger now affects magic attacks at full effectiveness. In case you were not sure... Uh, or if forgotten. Stagger only affects magical attacks at half effectiveness. This makes it at full effectiveness. So basically, this is pretty powerful in PvP. It makes all damage, incoming damage to you, uh, the same across the board. So anything that's not physical will now be able to be staggered, which is pretty strong. We have Micro Brew, which reduces the cooldown of Fortifying Brew by 75% and the, cool and the duration by 66%. So it's at 7 minutes, and then reducing it by 75% after that brings it down to uh, 3.5 uh, would be half, and it's going to be like 1.75, I think. So it's going to be about a minute and 45 second cooldown uh, on it. So that's pretty strong, if I got the math right on that. Minute and 45 second cooldown uh, on your fortifying brew. To increase your maximum health by 20%, the damage you delay with stagger by 26%, and all damage you take by 20%, that's really strong. The last option here is called Hot Trub. Um, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be Hot Trub, but Hot Trub Purifying Brew it deals 25% of your staggered damage to all enemies within 10 yards. So 10 yards is a small radius. And if you've managed to stagger up that high, you are probably giving your healers a heart attack. But um, this is an interesting option to take if you would like to. Honestly, though, I think Eerie Fermentation is going to be the 100% choice in this tier. We have some old abilities making a comeback here on the 5th tier. We have Guard coming back. Guard against future attacks, absorbing up to 401,000 damage for 15 seconds. Guard will also apply to the closest nearby enemy within 10 yards. Uh, I believe uh, the guard applying to a close nearby enemy was either an enhancement or it was something dealing with the old Black Ox statue. Um, basically, that's now baseline with this new guard. I think the guard's cooldown has been increased by 15 seconds. I could be wrong on that. But overall, it's essentially the same. Um, personally, I just would rather play with the new tools that are given to me in Iron Skin and Purifying Brew and how it interacts than dealing with guard, to be honest. There's guided meditation. Your cooldown of Z the cooldown of Zen meditation is reduced by 50%. While Zen meditation is active, all harmful spells cast against you, uh, cast against your allies within 40 yards, are uh, redirected to you. A Zen meditation is no longer canceled when being struck by a melee attack. So Zen medicate medication. Zen meditation if you've forgotten. 5 minute cooldown reduces all damage taken by 60% for 8 seconds. Moving, being hit by a melee attack or taking another action will cancel this effect. Um, so this basically is the cooldown of Zen meditation reduced so it's a 2.5 minute cooldown. And all harmful spells within 40 yards are all redirected to you, and you're taking 60% less damage. And then if you have Iron Skin Brew active, that's also um, some stagger damage, uh, increased stagger damage that you have, and then soften blows. I mean, it's a lot of damage that's just being mitigated by uh, this. So this is going to have great rated BG potential, I think. It's going to be really powerful. The last option here is Nimble Brew. Craft Nimble Brew. It's a 1.83 second cooldown, 1 minute recharge. Craft a Nimble Brew to share with allies. Maximum 2 can be carried at once. 
So, I'm not sure if this means two can be carried on the battlefield at once, made by a certain brewmaster, or two can be carried by a person at once. If this means two can be carried at once, and you can give it to your allies, um, I'm wondering if you can have two on one ally, two on another ally, two on another ally. However, it does have a one minute recharge, so you have to be careful of that. But Nimble Brew removes all root stun, fear, and horror effects and reduces the duration of such effects by 60% for 6 seconds. So it gives another trinket for Brewmasters to give out to players. So you can give it to your healers. In arenas, this will probably be taken. In rated battlegrounds, this will probably be taken. Uh, in maybe unorganized PvP, you might find something else. I'm not sure. In rated, Zen Meditation may be taken over it. Um, so there's kind of an, an, an option there between these two, uh, Zen, between Guided Meditation and Craft Nimble Brew. Guard is the only one that I really just don't see taken very much, unless you're just going to AoE solo and, and be a boss like that. That may be something that you may want to do, but for the most part, I just don't see... I'm not a big fan of Guard. I, I like the tools that are given to me in this new version of Brewmaster, and so I would be like, forget it. And I would probably go for either Guided Meditation or Nimble Brew, and then use the tools that are given to me to further enhance that. So that's pretty cool. Um, now here's the interesting thing, is that this is something I cannot answer for you because I have not tested it, is whether Keg Smash, um, is whether Keg Smash and Tiger Palm will reduce the cooldown on this craft Nimble Brew by, you know, four seconds every time. If it does, this is really strong. Um, and I can see this being used in unorganized PvP easily. Um, but I don't know. I'll have to check on that and see what it actually is. In the last tier, uh, we have this fun last tier. We have Incendiary Brew. Instant 45 seconds, your next breath of fire. So you, 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 I guess, I guess you, uh, drink it. Your next breath of fire has a 100% increased radius and damage, uh, 100% increased radius and damage. And disorients all targets it strikes for four seconds. So I believe this was like a glyph. Glyphs are gone in this game. And so now you have uh, an uber damage fire, which will deal, I guess, 100,000 fire damage. I'm assuming it applies to the dot, too, if you have keg smash on them. And then it'll disorient them as well for four seconds. So it's a big CC, but it's only a 45 second cooldown. Not so sure how much I like this one. There's double barrel. Another instant 45 second cooldown option. Your next Keg Smash deals 50% additional damage and stuns all targets it hits for 3 seconds. So, once again, these are very similar. And I don't like the fact that they're so similar. I kind of wish they were a little bit more creative in creating different options here. But basically, you can choose to make your, your, uh, your Flame Breath on a 45 second cooldown disorient everyone. Or you can make your barrel stun everyone for three seconds. It's up to you. You know, pick your poison on which one you like the best. My guess is double barrel, 25 yard, uh, 45 second cooldown, 25 yard range, stuns everyone. Will probably be the choice out of these two specifically. However, the last option is called Mighty Ox Kick. One minute cooldown, you perform a Mighty Ox Kick, hurling your enemy a distance behind you. I'm not sure... Um, the range on this. I'm really hoping it's like 40 yards. You just like, you chuck them. Um, I'll have to test this out and see what it is, but it's an interesting option. So, you have a lot of interesting options in this last tier. It's basically different forms of CC, and then you have different forms of uh, defensive measures in the tier above it. My favorite talent out of all of these is probably Eerie Fermentation, being able to fully uh, stagger with all the new tools that are given to you in uh, as a brewmaster to fully stagger magical damage in PvP is really strong and I, I really like it. So that's everything for all of the talents as a brewmaster monk. It has pretty much gotten dark here at Temple of the Five Dawns. I wanted to make sure I got this video out of the way before it got too dark because um, in the Mist Weaver video you saw that it does get really dark out here and it becomes difficult to actually see uh, things and what is going on. So. I'm glad I finished it in time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really like that they've honed in the theme of Brewmaster Monk. 
Hopefully this uh, video alleviated any concerns you may have had in terms of A, we threat generation for Brewmaster Monk because they are going to be able to shore that up with both Spinning Crane Kick and Summon a Black Arc Statue. So they should be okay with both of those. Uh, in terms of AoE threat, they'll be more in line with Prop Pallies and with uh, Guardian Druids in their A AoE threat generation. And at the same time, I think they have great uh, uh, single target uh, defensive capabilities as well. I really like how they've changed uh, the bruise to uh, kind of change things up as, as a monk. So I really do like where Brewmaster's headed. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This is the last time you will see Temple of the Five Dawns until Legion launches, unless I do a tour of it. It will be depending on what time I have. Uh, otherwise, that is everything for this video. I will see you guys later. Tealess out.